Okay, in this session we look at the integrator and positive feedback, giving the uh, creating what we expect in terms of a triangular wave and a square wave. Now the, the simplest amplifier I can actually put is, is just to place the amplifier and um, after all the largest gain you can get is the amplification of the amplifier itself. So any, any feedback you put to the negative side would only make the gain a little smaller. So what about just giving it the most gain that we can, right? What do we get? And before that going to put back the voltage source for a second. Uh, I'm going to delete this and connect it to the voltage source just to see that we have a triangular wave followed by a square wave. So this should be a square wave. I'm only doing one period. I should do a little more than that. say I do 10 periods. So this is the triangular wave. Uh, this is a square wave too. Okay, so what happened here? If I look at this voltage, well for some time it was zero and then it blew up. Oh, for some time it was a ramp and then it reached either end. Ah, yes because the initial initially I had not put min plus minus 10 volt I had put plus minus 1 volt and it took some time for rise and fall to happen and yeah that was the waveform I got but it's offset from 0 so right now even if I were going to get a square wave I wouldn't because this voltage is always more than 0 that means the output is always at 10 volt ah, that doesn't work so I need to do some sort of synchronization and if I look at this I'm putting the V clip voltage to something okay so I don't care about that so I should be putting V out and now I know better I start with minus 1 so if I put this as minus 1 then the charge across the capacitor is 0 Okay, so if I look at this signal, it's high, which means I should be going, okay, so I haven't synchronized with sort of half the period or something in that ballpark. So I can do that. Oh, sorry, 5 microseconds, right. Okay, so this is in the ballpark, but not quite right. Maybe I still need to change how much it's sort of storing and how much we are getting. Okay, so now it's in the ballpark. And uh, so that's my input. This is the virtual ground, which is virtually at ground. It's called a virtual ground. This is the real ground, and this is virtually a ground created because of the amplifier. So that's a common name you'll get here. And then if I look at V clip, yeah, it's it's a square wave. <coughs> and of course it's a square wave of ten volts. That's not necessarily what I want. Now there are two things. One thing is that this square wave is not actually synchronized with respect to that square wave. I mean this square wave after a, a little delay, I mean it starts changing as soon as this crosses zero. Yeah, it starts changing a little bit after it crosses zero, but it takes time to change, and then it takes time to come down. That's one thing. Second thing, we wanted a square wave in which the triangular wave was hmm, the triangular wave was sort of going through zero at about half the half the time that was high, and then it was low. So these two are not synchronized. So if I actually put this in feedback, this shouldn't give me the same thing I'm getting now because this square wave doesn't look like the square wave here. So the frequency we are feeding it now, if you click two times on it, you get two cursors. So you can put one here. The same thing going again is the period, right? So if I put that here, I get frequency around 50 kilohertz. <coughs> but if I put this in feedback, hmm, that should not, 
it's not synchronized, right? This is not like the square wave I wanted here. It's going to do something very bad to the waveform. This is what I think. Plus, of course, the voltage is 10 volts, which is not what I expected. I wanted it to be 1 volt. So, well, I could cheat and make this voltage source plus minus 1 volt. Okay, let's do that. I'll call it a new node. Uh, oh, it's flipped, is it? Minus, okay. So, minus 1 volt. And plus 1 volt. And remember, that in itself does not make sure the voltages are what I want. I need to create voltage sources with those names, with the nets having those names. So, minus 1 volt. <coughs> plus 1 volt and then I have to change these values ok I pause the video and just change the values so now let's run the simulation ok so the now output has the right amplitude I mean this is <laughs> you can't necessarily do this in real life but since this is sort of a universal amplifier and it does go up to plus minus 1 volt we've cheated and said fine there you go so this is my output <coughs> this is what is being generated they are not in sync okay so let's see what happens so you have to delete the pulse okay th this was another error if you didn't delete the voltage source this voltage source will force this node to be the voltage it wants and nothing can change it not even the v-clip <coughs> so the voltage source won't let that voltage change okay fine so now I'll put it in feedback let's see what happens whoa this does not look like a triangular wave this looks like a sine wave and uh, so does the output so what happened so this is exactly the problem that I had mentioned uh, with respect to turning something on and off and this frequency if you look at is nowhere near 50 kilohertz so let's say here oh I should double click should take that uh, there. it's at 1 megahertz which is a very very high frequency and and this is not what we expected out of this so what's happening is that as soon as I cross zero so let's say going positive it's easier to see as soon as I cross zero after a little this other voltage starts switching from minus 1 to plus 1 volt oh sorry I'm very sorry I need to click on both waveforms if I want to control one in each waveform so when I when I cross 0 which is here this thing starts changing auto immediately and because it changes immediately it changes it's changing the input now so this input is no longer fixed where it where we wanted it to be but it's continuously changing and because it's continuously changing the integrator output is continuously changing and yes it does look like a sine wave and a cosine wave because the integral of one is the other so so this is the same problem as uh, the one we were seeing where your output uh, as soon as you change your, sh your trigger your output changes and that changes uh, what you wanted to see so it's basically switching back and forth back and forth and this is the fastest it can switch back and forth that's what it means so what we need to do is we need to use the positive feedback we were talking about uh, and uh, have two separate triggers on when it turns on and when it turns off otherwise basically it's trying to it's just trying to switch all the time so this is the kind of ringing I had drawn in the 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 one in which you have the um, the solar cell and uh, you have a load and your load is continuously switching so the output just keeps switching and the input also keeps switching and you don't actually get what you wanted to get so here I have the circuit we were looking at with positive feedback so I know with this as plus minus 10 volt okay uh, well this should be a trigger of 5 volts this we know 
and of course because we are feeding back 10 volts and not 1 volt our frequency is going to be higher because the current we are pumping in is higher we can ramp up and down a little faster anyway so that 10 times faster okay so uh, so we'll feed it the same square wave and see if we get what we expect oh oh we should have removed the name okay so again we get 10 periods we look at the output and well, I just wrote this again so I again miss something initial condition yes V clip we don't want V clip to have initial condition we want V of V out to have an initial condition we set it at minus 1 volt because that's what the input is for the first 5 microseconds and we run it again ok now let's look at the output and see if that looks like a square wave Oh. well it doesn't switch and why doesn't it switch well it's supposed to switch plus when it crosses plus 5 volts ok maybe it's the initial state and then when it's 10 volts it's expecting you to hit minus 5 volts which we never hit so it never switches ok so one thing we can do is of course we can switch the input larger which anyway we are doing right right the f we haven't changed we, we don't know what happens when this is 1 volt so I'm leaving this as 10 volts so actually it's going to feed back 10 volts so let's see what 10 volts does oh that's a bit too much so yes we have actually seen this before it has plenty of time to ramp and then it basically reaches the other end and it's clipped okay so that means I need to change everything by a factor of 10 So now the input is fine, but the output is not happy. And there are a couple of reasons for this. Okay. Since we scaled everything, we have scaled the speed at which it goes up, but we've also decreased the time at which it comes. To, uh, it goes up. It will still be the range will still be only around 10 volts, which is what it is. And of course, we've messed up the offset, so it's around zero, and it's going plus minus 10, sort of thing. Okay. So I technically need to give it twice the amount of time. so that's what I've done here I have increased the time it was one microsecond I made it two microseconds it was two microsecond I made it four microsecond I'm retaining the 0 0.02 as it is because the rise and fall time are, are there okay so, so if I run this um, I don't know where I paused the recording um, I put the voltage source and I got sort of like a square wave and now I have fed back with the positive feedback which is supposed to change around 5 volts because that's what the 20k 1k did uh, that's in the last video and um, and it gives a waveform that looks like this so there's definitely a triangular wave that's a little more than plus minus 5 volts and then there is something that happens a little bit in the top it sort of seems to be you know, sort of chopping out the triangular wave and that's because that's the time in which this is changing so this slope is very slow this brings us to one of the characteristics of the op amp if you look at the op amp it has uh, different things you can adjust uh, by default this is actually around 20, 10 megahertz so I should put it back to the default and then the waveform would look like that it's, it's basically taking so long to change from one state to the other that that basically determines your flat state the, when it's flat it's integrating but it's taking so long and it's so slow 
this frequency if you look at is, is much lower than what we had simulated at with the 4 kilohertz triangular wave and the square wave right which was plus minus 10 volts by the way so this is 143 kilohertz and uh, the time is 6 microseconds 6.9 almost 7 microseconds so the the amplifier has a certain bandwidth it can work up to a certain frequency fast and it has a maximum slew rate slew just means going from one state to the other state how long it takes so this was just way too slow so if you looked at the slew rate of the amplifier which is this so all slew means a slope slope of the voltage at the output and the slope of the voltage of the output is around 10 megahertz so if the same thing I used a better op amp in which it's 100 megahertz and I reran the simulation now it looks a lot more like a square wave and the input looks a lot more like a triangular wave and the faster I make this the amplifier if I select which has a every time the slew rate changes the gain bandwidth sort of tracks it with the same capacitor that needs to do okay never mind uh, they track it they track each other the frequency hasn't changed significantly but the waveform now looks a lot more triangular and this waveform looks a lot squarer so the first op amp is not as critical because the R and the C is what is determining this waveform but the second op amp needs to be really really fast and so its slew has to be very very sharp so now we see that the voltage is closer to 5 and if you remember the last time the voltage wasn't close to 5 the voltage was close to 6 and this was because it was switching at 5 but it was taking just so long to switch that you couldn't really tell so this gives you a square wave and a triangular wave in which you can control the triangular wave amplitude sort of by changing this voltage right so if I change this to 15k yeah, then the amplitude increases because it's at that point that it switches but notice the frequency changed sorry 20k I should measure it so it's always good to measure these things so here the frequency is 367 kilohertz and if I oh this is 15 kilohertz sorry then if I measure the frequency then it's closer to 500 kilohertz so as the voltage at which you need to switch decreases your frequency increases and the reason for that is that the slope of this rising has been determined by the by this amplifier right the R and the C 1 over RC voltage divided by RC is what has set the slope at which the integrator is rising so if I change where the integrator needs to switch then my frequency also changes so uh, but in the uh, which we can see in uh, in class is that when you actually have this triangular wave generator you have a knob that lets you change the amplitude of the triangular wave but at a certain frequency so how do you do that